In this video, we're going to start our work on probability. To begin with, we're going to look at some of the vocabulary and notation used. We will then look at listing outcomes and sample spaces. And finally, we will answer some basic questions on probability. In later videos, we'll look at Venn diagrams, tree diagrams and the probability laws. Let's start off by looking at probability. When we're talking about probability, we're talking about the likelihood of something happening. If I said now the probability of it being Christmas Day on the 1st of January, we could say that that is impossible. So the easiest way to describe probabilities are with words. The probability of it being Christmas Day on the 25th of December is certain. We could give those two possible events as a numeric value. If we looked at the probability of it being Christmas Day on the 1st of January, numerically we could say that was zero. All probabilities lie somewhere between zero and one. We've got zero, which is going to be impossible, and one, which is going to be certain. So the probability of it being Christmas Day on the 25th of December is going to be one. It's a certainty. All other probabilities will lie somewhere between zero and one. If we sum all probabilities, they must be equal to one. So let's look at some of the vocabulary that we use. The first one I'm going to look at, now the first word is outcome, or if you like, outcomes. If I took this fair six-sided dice and I rolled it, the outcomes are the numbers one to six. They are all of the possible things that can happen. So I could roll a number one, a two, a three, a four, a five, or a six. If we were looking at a game of football and we were looking at one team, the outcomes are going to be lose, draw, or win. So these are the outcomes. If we look at an event, event is just considering now one of these particular outcomes taking place. So I could write now a certain event would be rolling a number two. So this is an example of an event, rolling a number, so rolling a number two. I could write this now as P2, so the probability of rolling a two. With this particular dice, we have a fair six-sided dice. Each of these numbers has an equally likely chance of landing on itself, or if I just roll it, we've got an equally likely chance of obtaining any one of these numbers if we've got a fair six-sided dice. So I can write the probability of a two will be one. There's only one two, and there are six possible outcomes. So it's the number of favorable outcomes divided by the total number of outcomes. If I wanted to find now the event, the probability of the event of it not being a two, we could of course go and add up the one, the three, the four, the five, and the six, and say there's five out of six, or we could do one minus the probability of it being a two. This is far more convenient in certain situations. So we can see now that would be one minus one six, which is of course gonna give us five sixes. We can say in general, the probability of something not happening, and I've just defined this to be the event A, will be equal to one minus the probability of that event A happening. This comes back to all probabilities sum to give one. So if I said the probability now of rolling an even number, we can see that that would be three out of six or one half. The probability of not rolling an even number would be one minus one half, which would give us one half. So outcomes are all of the things that can happen. An event is considering now one of these to happen. And we can find the probability of an event happening or not happening. Let's look at listing outcomes. So if we start off, we'll list outcomes. So often when we have a range of possible outcomes, it's more uh, efficient or easier for us to list the outcomes. So what I'm going to do is have a fair coin. So I'm going to have a fair coin and we will flip it twice. So we'll have two flips and we will consider now the possible outcomes. When we do this, we do it systematically. So I'm going to flip this twice. So on the first one, I could have a head. On the second one, I could have a head. On the first one, I could have a head. The second one, a tail. 
the third one I could have now a tail on the first one, a head on the second one, and finally a tail on the first one and a tail on the second. So what I've done is listed the outcomes now of flipping this coin twice. So if we wanted to do it for free, we could do head, 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 and so on and so forth. We have now a systematic approach and we list the outcomes. This can be really helpful later on when we're looking at some of the probability laws. So if I was asked to find now the probability that I didn't flip any heads, we would simply go straight to this one. So that now is listing outcomes. Let's move on and look at sample spaces. What I've got here are now two fair six-sided die. So all I'm going to do is roll them, and we can see just rolling them, we can do that. We could now look at adding the faces, so the number of the faces. And what I'm going to do is draw a sample space. So what I can do, if I call this one at number one, so we'll call this one at dice number one and this one at dice number two. I can put that dice number one is going to be here and dice number two is going to be here. We're going to be adding these. We know that these are fair six-sided dice. We have now one, two, three, four, five, and six. We're going to have one, two, three, four, five, and six. Often if we just, uh, let's just put some lines on to make this slightly easier to see, we can draw up now all of the possible values that adding these can take. So if I just do that, that looks something like that, and then we can go across here, and I'm just gonna put these in. You will see that this does have a pattern in this particular case, and we can go ahead and fill it out quite quickly. So that's what it's gonna look like. So if I have now one and one, quite clearly we're going to end up with two, so if I get a number one on the first dice and a number one on the second, then we'll have three, four, five, six, and seven. We can see three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. We're going to have four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. We're gonna have five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. We're going to have now on here six, seven, eight, nine, 10, and 11. And then we're going to have 7, 8, 9, 10. Then we're going to have 11 and 12. So if we looked now at the probability of an event happening, let's say now the probability of scoring a combined total of 5, we can see now the number 5s. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4. So we can say that we have 4 out of 36 possible outcomes. In probability, we either write now probability as a fraction or a decimal, and we can, of course, cancel this, and that's going to be 1 over 9. Divide in numerator and denominator by now the, uh, the 4. So if I said the probability of not obtaining a total of 5, we can simply say that that's going to be 1 minus 1 ninth, which is going to give us 8 ninths. Or, alternatively, you could say 32 out of 36. We can now see how much uh, easier it is to work with one minus a value than going ahead and counting all the others. So all I've done is counted now the four fives and then said the probability of it not happening um, would be one minus that value. Let's look at now the probability so we can define an event and I'm going to say, in fact I'll say the event A. So this is an event event A is going to be now obtaining a sum that is a square number. So let's go ahead and look at that. So I can say the probability of A, if we look now, all I'm looking for are the square numbers. We've got 4 and we've got 9. So I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. So we can say this is 7 out of 36. Uh, so the probability of obtaining now a sum that is not a square number, we could say that that was going to be whatever's left, which is going to give me 29 over 36. It's much better than counting them. So if we look at now an, a different event, we can define event B. And if we look at B, what we'll say is now on here, we will have a prime, so a sum that is prime, and it's going to be odd. So prime and odd. So this time I've defined two different things. 
that is the event B. So if we look at the prime odd numbers, and I'm going to just highlight these, we're going to have now this one, that's prime and odd. This one, we've got the 5, we've got the 5, these are prime and odd. We're going to have the 7, that is prime, that is prime, and these are also odd. 9 is uh, odd, but it's not prime, and then 11 is going to be prime. So all we can do from our sample space is do that quite quickly. So we've got 8, we've got 12, we've got 14. So from here, let's just check 2, 6, 12, 14. So we can say now the probability of B, so let's write this in, probability of B is going to be equal to, we've got 14 out of 36, which if we wanted, we could simplify to 7 out of 18. So the probability of not B is going to be 1 minus that value. So there's a very basic introduction, and it's probably just revision on some of the basic probability that you've seen before. When we're talking about outcomes, these are all of the things that can happen. An event is one of those particular things happening, rolling a number five, rolling an even and a prime number. All probabilities lie somewhere between zero, which is impossible, and certain, which is one. We can say the probability of something not happening is one minus the probability of it happening.